Okay, we're going to do a test here. This is an ES50X firmware version. I'll just do a reset real quick, but it's 01.02.008. I've uh, installed all of the devices that we would typically have at a job, one of our jobs. This, this job here actually had a false alarm um, last year when we originally installed this from an Attikey. So I use this programming file. I've got um, some modules here. These modules are basically, there's four of them and then there's a smoke detector. That's what we would normally have in a sprinkler room at this site. It's four modules, uh, two tampers, a water flow, a low temp, and then one smoke detector at the panel. And that's just an SD365. And then over here, I've got five uh, heat detectors uh, that are all um, high temperature. I think four of them are SD365HTs. And, um, excuse me, one of them is an SD355. I'm actually just going to see if I can pull this one off here. Because this that's actually the one that has been alarming, is that one right there, which is number 13. Um, we're going to just see if I can put this down for one second. Need two hands for that. Okay, so there's a detector. You can see right there. H365HT should be 190 degree fixed temperature. Um, 150 degree F66C rate of rise. Well, that's interesting. Maybe that's the problem. It says right on there. 150 degree F, 66 C rate of rise. Does this actually have a rate of rise function? It's my understanding that these do not. Not entirely clear right now. Rate of rise. 190 degree fixed heat colon, 150 degree F, 66 C. Rate of rise, 15 degree F slash a minute. Huh. A little confused by that labeling because this is supposed to be 190 degrees, so why would it ever? say anything about 150 degrees F. Anyway, we're going to put it back and we're going to do this test. Anyway, I, my panel was in trouble. I just have the piezo disabled because it drives me nuts when I'm doing a lot of stuff down here with it, and I've done a lot of stuff with this panel. Um, okay, we're going to, uh, well, I've got my temperature probe. Temperature probe, I'm going to turn it on to start logging, so it's kind of just been room temperature here. If I hold the, push the button, and then I hold it down, it should say, I'm upside down here, but it should say REC. That was an REC, so it's recording. I think that, that device is just calibrating since it was off. There we go, back to normal. Panel still normal. 942. So I'm going to turn my heater on. And this is set to go up to, I believe, 62. But the heating element is in the bottom, which is, which is why I put all this in the top. Let me get that in there just a little better. There we go. So all that's in the top. The heating element is down here so when this is heating this bottom one does get fairly warm so I kept all this stuff away from it but all these up here totally can be touched um, it's set to 
go to, here, I'm going to flip it on. I have it set to go to 62. Kicks on. It's going to say, well, that's the current temperature. And I have it set to go to 62 degrees C. And then um, the timer is just set for 15 minutes so that if I were to walk away, you know, it's going to heat it up at its rate. I heard the heating element kick on. You know, it had a little bit of warmth in there already because I had done this a couple times. I was letting it cool down. Um, but uh, that timer, I just didn't want it, if I went away or fell asleep, I didn't really just didn't want to leave this thing on all night in my house. I, I think it's probably safe, but I can't imagine anything worse than burning your house down because you were playing with a test heater. So it does heat, it's going to take a little bit of time to get the temperature up, but then once it gets it up, it might actually go over the 62. I'm, I'm pretty sure I have a program to go to 62, but it kind of, it'll go over, it has this little vent on the top. So I think that kind of affects how, um, like if I have that closed tight, it'll probably go way over. If I leave it open, it lets just enough heat out that it, um, it'll kind of, go over the 62 but then it'll the element will turn off and it'll just gradually kind of cool down until it gets close to that number but I think it's going to alarm before that so it's been one minute since I turned it on Gonna take it a few minutes here, but it's gradually warming up. This guy might alarm too. I think I think if it goes over a little bit too much, this guy kicks on its own a little alarm. This was not a super expensive test oven, or it's technically it's a drying oven, but uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of money. It was something I found on the internet. And I'm pretty sure it came from China. And the manual is... I figured it out, but it's not the best manual in the world. But it does work. Okay, it's coming up 46 degrees C. Panel's still normal. I think last time I did this, it started at about 50 degrees and then it tripped at about 8 minutes. I just didn't let it cool down as much that time. I'm going to go look at the spec sheet on this, the cut sheet. Because um, that label, I find that label to be a little confusing. I've got another one here. Let's look at this label. I think this label, maximum install, 135 degree fixed temp. Heat rate of rise, 100 degree F. Oh, I understand it now. I just, I, I understand it now. So it's saying that the maximum install temperature for the 135 fixed temp heat 
slash rate of rise is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So in other words, if you have the the device, either the fixed temp probably or the rate of rise version of that, you can't install it in ambient conditions above 100. For the 190 degree fixed heat, it's not supposed to be in an ambient condition above 150. And I don't think I'm going over that. I'm, I'm probably getting close, but I think it's tripping in the 140s. But even still, that's that's ambient, not trip temperature. It's almost like it's tripping when it somehow gets close to the maximum ambient temperature. But I don't think it's even going over that. These, certainly these attics that we've had have usually been in the 130s where they trip at. And then the rate of rise, 15 degree F per minute. That just must be the rating for when it trips. So we're at 60. It's been five minutes. Well, 60 degrees C. It's been six minutes. It takes a little time for everything to warm up. Sixty-one. Still normal. Feel like it's coming though. Sixty-two degrees. This one actually is uh seems to be Doing pretty good with that, not bouncing over the temperature. It might, it's probably going to still a little bit, I think. Seven minutes. I mean, that sensor is probably, I don't know exactly where that is in the cabinet, but these devices probably takes a little bit time of time for them to, um, they probably lag behind the thermometer or the thermostat on this thing a little bit, I would guess. Sixty two, seven minutes. Actually, it's holding pretty good. Maybe it is because I have this cap open a little bit more. I think the last couple of times I probably had it a little bit less open. Well, there's 63. The one thing I did do is I moved that detector around. I wonder if the orientation of the detector would have any impact. Can't believe that it really would, but that is one thing that we probably, you know, when we're mounting these, they're hanging on an angle. And they are probably hanging differently. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Add a heat detector. All right. Knowledge, silence. The rest of the house doesn't like the noise. Yeah, it went at, well, according to this, about 65, but we'll check the data logger too. So let's just do one other thing here. If I do a reset right now, I think it's going to reactivate because it did the last time I did it. Let's just do a reset. So, I'm going to think about it for a second. It's still lit up. I think it's going to go right back into alarm. Yep, yep, there it goes. Let's 
Alarm silence. So, it's been 10 minutes, 67 degrees C, which is definitely not anywhere close to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's more like 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out. This little temperature logger. I'm going to push the button again so we can stop the recording. This is test run number three. Okay, stop. It'll stop now if I hold that down. Oops, I think I got to hold the button down. Stop. There we go. So now I'll go plug this in computer. I can see the temperature profile that this saw actually, and this is logging in Fahrenheit. It's dropping now. I think it, um, I don't know. We'll see what it says. Anyway, I'm going to leave the door open for a little bit. Maybe turn this guy off and let it cool down. I might even do another run after it's cooled down for a little bit, and I'll reset the panel after it's cooled down. Anyway, that's it. I've been able to repeat this now. <whistles> oh, see, this isn't crazy hot. I can touch it. It's it's warm. It's hot. I wouldn't want to to um, hang on that. It's not 190 degrees. You know, the interesting thing is too. It's been this detector 13 that's tripped every time. Um, yeah, I can totally hang on that. It's this. This stuff's warm. It's warm. It's not 190. I can touch that. That's metal. It's it's uncomfortable, but it's not 190, or I'd be literally burning my hand right now. <laughs>